Okay, so let's talk now about mounting solutions. You'll see I popped the plastic cover off the front of the motor, which is something that you will need to do if you intend to use the front mount plate, which is the one that I'm probably gonna recommend to most people at least running an aluminum profile rig. But let's run through all the options that are available at least in this point of time, starting with just direct mounting to your sim rig. Now, if we flip the unit up onto its back, you'll see there are a couple of T-slot channels here and it comes pre-installed with two M6 T-nuts on either side. So you can obviously slide those into whatever position you want front to rear. Now the spacing between those two sides, center to center, I measure at 87 millimeters. Now that is unfortunately a little bit different from what you have on the Fnatic CSL DD and DD1, DD2, for example. Now, unfortunately it's just close enough that it will be tricky to drill additional holes next to the Fnatic ones if you've got a rig that is pre-drilled for Fnatic. And because this is a brand new uh, ecosystem, it probably will be a while before we see cockpits on the market that are pre-drilled for these wheelbases specifically. So it's unfortunate that it's so close to the Fnatic stud pattern, but not quite exactly the same. So if you are intending to hard mount to your existing cockpit, just be aware of that. Now, the first option we're gonna look at here is the tilting uh, bottom mount. And there's full instructions that take you through this on their website as well. So I won't spend a whole lot of time here. So what happens is this bolts to the bottom here like so, that gives you a nice little interface here that you can bolt to on the side. And then you would mount your side bracket either that way like that, or you could put it around this way if you wanted to as well. It shouldn't make any difference to the rigidity. That gives you a little bit of tilt angle here as well. You can see we're able to tilt like so. And then we just bolt this directly to whatever our wheel plate is on our wheel deck. So if you do need to drill some additional holes, but you don't want to have them super close to the Fnatic ones, that is a good solution for that. You then have the option for the tiltable side mount. This works very similar to what we saw with the tiltable bottom mount. Instead of these bottom brackets bolting to something which is going to sit underneath, in this case, what they do is they actually sit on either side. So you can imagine one's going to sit on this side like that, bolt in from the side, and then the other one's going to sit on this side too, and that will sandwich the wheelbase in between the two uprights on your sim rig. So you can see there's a couple of little channels just like what we saw on the bottom tiltable mount that allows you to rotate the wheelbase. And again, there's instructional videos on their website, so I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on this. One very important thing to note with the side mount is that it doesn't come with the pieces of profile or the brackets to actually mount those pieces of profile to your rig, only the hardware to mount the wheelbase itself. Now, the reason for that is because the lengths of these pieces of profile will obviously vary depending on the width of your cockpit, so they can't account for every single cockpit there. This is the ASR4, and we didn't have any issues mounting this up whatsoever. One other very important thing to note here as well is even if you do have an aluminum profile cockpit, that does have pieces of profile on the sides like this, you will need to have tapped threads for M8 bolts in the sides here too, just to allow you to mount that bracket on. So ASR4, like what we have here, was absolutely no issues. It was completely plug and play. But obviously your experience may vary depending on what cockpit you're using. Now, in case you're wondering, all the mounts that we're looking at with the exception of the front mount are all three millimeter thick steel. Grab a magnet here and you can see for yourselves that it's nice and sticky. So look, to be completely honest with you guys, there is a little bit of flex there, certainly not anything that I noticed when I was driving, but you can see in the footage for yourselves that there is a little tiny bit of movement there under some conditions. And if you intentionally pull up and down on the wheel, you definitely will see a little bit of movement there, but it's definitely within what I would say an acceptable range. The only exception to that being if you don't use this bottom mount correctly. Now, you also have the option using those same T-nut fixtures on the bottom here to mount directly to this plate. So you can see here on the bottom of the plate, there are some counter sunk holes. All these accessories come with a little bag of hardware, including T-nuts as well, if you have an aluminum profile rig. So that is a nice touch and it's nice high quality hardware too. So you'd simply just bolt this bracket to the bottom of your wheelbase and then bolt from the top down onto whatever mounting surface you're wanting to do. So this mount works absolutely fine if you're mounting to a solid cross member. So say a piece of profile or a piece of wood or something like that, nice and rigid, then that's not gonna cause any issues. However, I would recommend not using this piece if you don't have a solid cross member underneath. So if you've got a solution like what comes with the ASR4 from Advanced Sim Racing, for example, where you've got two pieces of profile that come out from the uprights, but don't continue all the way across. If you mount that, directly to the top there with a gap in between, then you will notice there is quite a bit of flex. So if you don't have a continuous cross member underneath, I wouldn't recommend using the, uh, the table or bottom mount. So that then brings us to the front mount option, which is the one that I'm gonna recommend for the majority of people running a aluminum profile rig, simply because it is a little bit more rigid than the other ones that we looked at. It's eight millimeter thick steel, as opposed to the thinner stuff that we are looking at earlier, and it does make a tangible difference here. We're not talking massive amounts, and again, I wasn't able to actually notice any flex 
flex in the wheel when I was driving. But when you look at it on camera, there's definitely less flex here than what we saw with the other mounts. So what we have here is a couple of side pieces and those allow you to bolt directly to the uprights on your profile. If we spin it around here too, you can see there are some channels here. So that allows us movement in and out to account for the width of the rig too. Because we've got slots on either side, that allows us to mount forward and back and tilt up and down as well. So plenty of versatility there. Spin it back around now. But the downside to this mount is it does require a little bit more work to get installed. So as I mentioned earlier, you will have to remove the plastic cover from the front of your wheelbase. You're also gonna need to loosen the four bolts which secure the quick release in place and you will need to calibrate your wheel center again once you've done this because it likely will slip out even just the tiniest little bit. So what you're gonna do is sit the motor up on its back like so. You will need to be careful because it's not super stable. And then the mount is actually going to slip over the top. And again, they've got an instructional video that runs you through all of this in detail. So it sits on like that. There's four M5 bolts, which then secure this plate to the motor assembly. Then the front plate goes back on here. And you can see the reason why you need to loosen those bolts is because that quick release is now recessed into that plastic cover by a further eight millimeters. So we're gonna slide that forward, secure it back in position, and then put the original bolts back in here. Now it's important to understand once again that there are separate bolts which are fixing this steel plate to the wheelbase. You're not relying on the bolts going through the plastic cover to actually secure that in place. So if you're using those bolts to secure it without the additional bolts, you've done it wrong and you very, very likely will at the very least crack that plastic. So just be aware, make sure you follow those instructions. <laughs> 